Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company accounting lesson. So in our last video, we learned how to take some information and create a bank reconciliation. Now our next step in that process is to learn how to do the required journal entries that will accompany a bank reconciliation. So as we learned last time, there's two sides to a bank reconciliation. There is the bank side and there is the book side. And at the end, the two adjusted balances should always equal. Now that we've finished our bank reconciliation, we have some updates to do. Now keep in mind, we don't have control over the bank's records, so we can't journalize anything for the bank. However, we do have control over our records for the company, so we need to do some journal entries to update cash. Currently our cash account says that there's a balance of 22000 dollars in there and after really analyzing this information over here we learned that oh that's not quite right there was a collection there was an error that we had made there was a non-sufficient funds check and there was a service charge so let's move over to our journal entries and let's start analyzing these two pieces all of our ads and all of our deducts to see what entries are required now for your first entry and, and remember you could always split up each individual um, uh, each individual piece of your bank reconciliation. However, um, general treatment is to do one journal entry for all of your ads and then one journal entry for all of your deducts. Now, when you take a look at your ads, and I, we don't need um, dates for this one. If we really want to, let's go ahead and put those in. That would be on July 31st. Okay, so on July 31st, we realized that we need to make some updates here. Now we have one piece here, we have a collection and we have an error. So remember this first entry is going to deal with all of your ads. So when we say ad, that's an increase. So what is increasing by this total of $2,550? What account does this bank reconciliation really deal with? That would be cash. So cash is increasing by this amount and our cash is decreasing by this amount. So let's focus on this. When cash is going up, how do we make it go up in our journal entries? Remember, cash is an asset. In order to increase an asset, we have to debit. So cash will be our debit for that total $2,550. Now keep in mind, if you're really struggling with debits and credits, you're going to want to go back to those um, earlier videos that talk about how debits and credits uh, affect each of the different accounts. But you'll get a little bit more practice here as well. Now let's take a look at all of the different pieces that we have here. So first we have a collection of $2,500. Now in E, where that collection was noted. It says that the bank collected $2,500 on a note and that includes interest of $150. So this $2,500 is actually two pieces of it. There is interest of 150 and there is a decrease in that note receivable for $2,350, the difference between those two. So let's talk about how that would affect our entry here. First off, Let's talk about the fact that these people do not owe us $2,350 on their note first. So previously they owed us that amount, now it's decreasing. So what's happening to our note receivable? That is decreasing. So in this case we have to credit that asset notes receivable for the 2,350 decrease in principal. Now this might be a little bit easier to understand if you have um, some experience with financing. So if you know what it's like to lend someone money and have a portion of the payment be interest and the other portion of the payment be principal. It's kind of like the opposite side of when you sign a note for your car, when you're financing a car purchase. A portion of your payment goes towards paying off the balance and the other portion is the payment of interest that's a Accumulated. So here we have the note receivable decreasing by 2350 and we also get to record that we have some interest revenue for 150 So we obviously can't walk away, walk away now because we have cash of 2550 and we have credits of 2500 So we're missing something here. We are missing that $50 error. Now errors are a little bit more difficult, however they're not terrible. 
So in order to figure out what we have to credit in regards to the error, we have to go back to the actual error and see what that was for. So the company wrote a $500 check for rent expense. So our last credit that we need is a credit to rent expense. Now think about what's going on here really quickly. When we wrote that check, we should have debited rent expense for $500 and credited cash for $500. So that would be debit rent expense 500, credit cash 500. However, we accidentally debited and credited each of those accounts by too much. Debit rent expense for 550 and credit cash for 550. So to reverse those effects of what we did wrong, we're essentially flipping that. That rent expense is being credited and now cash is being debited for that amount. So it's flipping, it's kind of fixing our error that we made previously. Now for our second piece, we have to do all of our deductions. Now I'm going to start with the easiest part, which is cash. What is happening to cash? Well, it's going down by $1,010. So I'm going to go down to this line right here, a little bit of a spoiler alert, and I'm going to credit cash for that 1010 Now we have some additional pieces of information that we have to include here. We are missing two debits. The first one is that non-sufficient funds checks for, nine, for 960. Now when you have a non-sufficient funds check, when a check bounces, what do you say to that person? Um, excuse me, uh, you owe me that money. So what account do we use when someone owes us money, when we are going to be receiving money in the future? That would be accounts receivable. So that's us saying, okay, we need to contact this person and say, excuse me, your check bounced, you have to pay me back that $960. Now keep in mind, um, in the accounting world, this is nice and easy, we just record the entry, but in the real world, this would also have to follow up with a phone call or a letter saying, just a heads up, your check bounced, so we're still going to need that $960 payment. Okay, and last but not least, we need to record that $50 service charge. So in this case, this is just an expense for us. And we see it a few, uh, kind of listed a few different ways depending on what textbook you use. Um, the important thing is that it is recorded as an expense. So um, there could be service charge expense, miscellaneous expense, um, administrative expense. Um, typically the one that I see the most though is miscellaneous expense. So. That will be our final piece. And if we look at our debits and our credits, they now equal, we are good to go. So continue to look at those bank reconciliations and practice journalizing the book side of the bank rec, because it is a little bit difficult if you don't practice it enough, but the more you do it, the more sense it should make. And keep in mind, whenever you're seeing those errors, like what we had here, you have to go back to the problem and take a look at what that original uh, payment received or payment made was for. As well as for your collection, you need to go back to the problem and see if it notes anything about interest that was included with that collection. So continue practicing. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. And as always, happy studying!